only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. Going to help you get ready for the NBA Finals now. Our next guest, among other things, two-time NBA champion, NBA Finals MVP in 81. He actually was traded for Bill Walton once, and he, uh, of course, is the president, as long longtime Kings fans know, president of the Bano Udri Fan Club. But he's <laughs> Drape's good buddy, so I'll let Drape's bring him on. Yeah, I got to bring in my guy, brother Maxwell, Cedric Maxwell, 1981 NBA Finals MVP. You can hear him on 98.5 The Sports Hub out there in Boston calling Celtics games. Max, appreciate it, man. I know you got some time off. Y'all don't play for, what, another two months, it seems like. Uh, congratulations on making the finals, brother. Well, we know we we know that the Kings aren't playing right now. Uh, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, Max. You know, before we went on the air, my co-host, Kevin Whitey uh, Gleason, asked me, you and Max are cool, right? Y'all friends. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Max just texted me. He said, anytime, Brother Draper. So we're good. Last time I saw you, Max, I had to kick you off my TV That's show yeah. because you were dropping F-bombs. When they go low, you go high. So I'm going to go high right now, big fella, and ignore that comment. How you doing, Max? I am doing just fine, sir. As you know, just as state, you know how I am. I just state the obvious. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me let me start off by saying because Max does keep it real. He's always honest. He's always truthful. He states the obvious. This Celtics run to the finals, the easiest path in the history of the NBA, right, Max? Oh, wow, <laughs> wow! I thought you were keeping it real. You know, brother Debbie, here, here's what, and I've heard all these people say that at the end of the day, they don't. What did they put on your? What did they put on your ring? You you had the easiest path for to say you won, mm. and I think that's the way everybody's looking at it. You know, they they have had an easy path, but this is you, you can't you can only play who they have in front of. You. Yeah, um, Cedric, I'm no genius, but when the Celtics got Drew Holiday, I right then I thought, well, they're they're going to win the championship. Obviously, you know, Porzingis has been huge, but how has Drew Holiday helped this team? reach another level well he's been unreal you think about shooting the basketball and being available to knock down those shots that's that's the thing about it when you have a uh, a guy like him who's come comes over and i did not know how good he was the guy who knew it was brad stevens hmm. and brad decided that he wanted to pull this uh pull this trigger and brad has made all the right moves i mean you think about i love marcus smart and i know how, how my guy Draper feels about him, but you move Marcus, and then what happens, you go out and you get Drew Holiday. So, so many good things have happened in light of, you know, who he, who he was and what he's done, and he's just made a, he's made a, a great contribution when you think about Brad Stevens and, and uh, where, where this team stands right now. Max, uh, let's stay right there, if you will, and, and give Brad Stevens his flowers. I remember mm -hmm. when when he you know moved into the front office, stepped down from the coaching. I thought, man, I just don't see Brad Stevens as a front office guy. I see him as a coach, lifelong coach. Are you surprised at the great job that he's done? Has he even surpassed your expectations for him? Well, I think he's done an excellent job, and and when I think about where he, where what he's done, is he's just really solidified uh, this club, and he's gotten people. To in in certain places to buy into what this team likes to do, uh, you know you can you can talk about the Celtics, but at the end of the day, you look at them going, okay, what do they bring to the table, and how much do they have? Well, Brad Stevens has done this job where he's had these guys just play such great basketball, and they understand who they are. How smart is this team set? I'm thinking of the Celtics teams that you played with. Yeah, some really, as we found out later on in their careers, yourself included, how really smart they are. How important is that when you're talking about a team that's competing and actually winning championships to have guys that don't just have a you know high basketball IQ and are good players, but are really smart individuals and are smart enough to figure out how to win when the pressure's on? That really is so true. And the fact that winning when the pressure's on, so many guys don't know how to do that. Uh, and I think you still, I, and I, as much as I like to pick, you know, at, at you guys with the Kings, I love what that team has done. Uh, I love De'Aaron Fox. Uh, you know, the bonus has been great. 
you know, this is one of the few trades you think about that helped really both teams when it came when you got uh, you got the bonus and Halliburton goes to Indiana. Uh, you know, these were two good two good two great players who happened to go different places, but it worked out well for both. Hey Max, uh, I, I, I'm gonna have you set the record straight because you know I, I, I see you know the, the discussion on social media. I'm watching ESPN first take, and they're talking about whose team is it, Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum? Was Tatum happy that Jalen Brown got the Larry Bird Trophy? You are around these guys. You've seen these guys since they've come in the league. What's that relationship like? And and I'm giving you the floor here to set the record straight as as that duo. I think is one of the best in the NBA. Yeah, they they've done just that, brother Draper. They they uh, they've just really been a great tag team. Uh, I think that when Jalen Brown and Tatum finally came together and said, "Look, we're going to show you how this thing works, and we're going to make it work." And we like each other. And for the longest time, people did not believe they liked each other. And um, But now they've come out. They play great ball together. I got got something I always, you know, you know, I always keep it on the 100, which I'll let you know yeah. on a little that happened the other day. Well, when I'm at the game, um, all of a sudden they have me get, receiving the trophy. Well, Lisa Salters is supposed to tell me who is the finals MVP. And so we come down and they get everything started and I get the trophy. I give it over to Wick, the one of the owners of the Celtics. Mm-hmm. And then he speaks for a while. And then she comes back to me about five minutes later and says, okay, Cedric Maxwell is going to announce the winner of the MVP. And I'm like, you didn't tell me who. I'm <laughs> no. You can see me go, who? you didn't tell me who it was. How about those ah, damn Celtics? Yeah. And, and, and that's when I said, how about them damn Celtics? To give myself an opportunity <laughs> to just kind of, okay, hold on. Let me see how I can make this thing work. And uh, that's what that's what kind of happened. And I was able to kind of just bring myself back together and say, okay, here we are. And this is what has to be done. But uh, Lisa did not tell me. She left me out there in the middle of the road for a while, bro. How'd you How'd you find out then? Eventually, how How'd you know that it was she? She, she ended up telling me. Uh, she told me after I, I said, "How about the damn Celtics?" Then I bent down, and she has the paper. She had it written down on a piece piece of paper, but I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't see. It. <laughs> so she whispered in your ear, right? <laughs> yeah, I what? couldn't see what it was. So finally, I just, finally she said. Jalen Brown. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Jalen Brown, he's the winner. So, yeah, that was really kind of funny how how that really came into play, how everything happened at that particular time. Uh, hey, uh, we don't know, obviously, who your team's going to play. Looks like it could be uh, Dallas, most likely, but we'll mm. see. What is that going to be like if uh, Kyrie returns ooh, to ooh, Boston ooh. for the for the championship? See, brother Drape, I thought you were keeping it real. No, I was. I, I, I was going to ask you that, you big keep, fella. I thought you were keeping it real, but you were like, you you going? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask this one, so he he beat me to it. I want to know, brother uh, Maxwell. I think that it's it's good. if if now I just say if nobody's done it in the history of the NBA, come back three zero. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you give Minnesota credit for playing really good, playing well the other way, other day. And um, so I want to, I'll, I'll say that if Kyrie comes back into the building, I just hope there's not a lot of F-bombs. Mm. That's what I'm looking for. I, I, I hope that that doesn't happen. I think the Celtic fans are smart enough to understand what they need to do and uh, all those good things. But if you think about, uh, who the Celtics are and what they what they've been over this time? Uh, yeah, it's go- it's going to be funny to <laughs> see, you know, exactly <laughs> what kind of happens. <laughs> what kind of happens here? I, I I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Really, I I really am. <laughs> you, you know, Max, I, I was in the building when Kyrie was with the Nets, and it was a first round series. And he came in, and people threw the water bottle in at him. Like now, we're talking about potentially NBA Finals. Is he public enemy number one across the league? I know the dislike for LeBron in Boston, but Kyrie, it seems like it's deep seated, man. Like it's down deep. Is he the most hated guy in Boston? You think? 
Well, you know, I did that the other day on my podcast. I asked a question, and you can run this one for yourself. You, you, you're building the Mount Rushmore in your backyard, and you're, you're a Boston fan. Who are the four guys on that Mount Rushmore that you hate more than anybody else? And you don't start out with Kyrie, but you start out with A-Rod. Mm, A-Rod, yeah, Kyrie, yeah. now who else? Somebody said Manning the other day, and then they saw, then they got a little confused about where else they were going. But it was <laughs> it was that was the kind of list. But mm. I think when Kyrie comes back, I think it does. It takes on a, a, a life of its own yeah. if, in fact, he's the guy coming back into the building. Uh, you know, Kyrie is burning sage. Yeah, he's already <laughs> uh, he's burning sage, and like, dude, really, he just can't get out of his own way. I'm just like, damn, dude, it can't be that bad. But yeah, that's that's that seems the way Kyrie. If he comes back to the building. Uh, you know, NBA security will be doubled. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, Cedric Maxwell's with us. Uh, I know that uh, Chandler Parsons recently was talking about Luca, and again, we don't know if it's going to be Boston, Dallas. Right now, it looks that way. We don't know. Uh, but he was mm-hmm. saying Luca is better than than Larry Bird. He's done everything that Larry Bird could do. I know that you, Cedric, had a complicated history with Larry, your teammate, won championships together. What do you think of that comparison, Luca and and the great Larry Bird? Uh, has Luca won the championship yet? No, he is not. No, not yet. Okay, well, let's start there. Yeah, let's start there. Ain't he uh, won an MVP yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, yes, they, and you could go there. Uh, Luca's Luca's tremendous player. Uh, you know, obviously, if Larry Bird had had the three point shot, would have been a more of a weapon during the time. The, the league right now is set up perfectly for Larry Bird the way he plays. Uh, you know, shooting the basketball from the outside, all the great plays. Uh, Luca is not the passer Larry is. Uh, you know, I don't think Luca is Luca is not the defender that yeah. Larry Bird is. Mm, so yeah. there's some things that, that I would say Luca isn't. Now, can he grow into that? You know, that's a whole nother story. And I look at it, I remember talking to some people in Atlanta how, you know, the trade happened where it was Trey Young for Luca. I said, and I asked somebody, you know, somebody with the Hawks, I said, when you guys want to get that trade back? And the guy goes, I know, I think that. And some guy's like, no, I think Trey is great with the rappers. I said, rappers? Rappers only buy about two or three tickets. Luca sells a block of tickets, man. So I think it's in that rapper. situation. But, but right now, I'm, I can't I can't give Luca that now. I can't, no, no. I can't say that he's greater than Larry Bird. He's a tremendous scorer. We've seen that. But one thing that he does that drives me crazy and if you are playing with him, he's so ball dominant. Yes, yeah, that you yeah. that you that you have a tendency that you watch in the NBA during the the eighties. The there was more ball movement. I look at the way the Kings play. You don't touch it that long. Yeah, and it's in somebody else's hands. And you know those things when it when it happens like that, and, and that's why you hear here, you know. Keegan. You still having nightmares about that, right? <laughs> okay. Murray, yeah, okay. you still Murray, having nightmares. Murray, you still yeah, having nightmares. Man, come on. I, I, I never <laughs> know where you're going, man. I never know where you're going, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was, that was the, that was, if you look at the way, you know, Sacramento and Brown has them moving that basketball, that to me is the future of basketball. You look at the way Indiana played. And Adam played the same way mm-hmm. when Halliburton was in. There was more ball movement, creating situations for other people. When you look at Dallas, Dallas, that ball sticks with two people, and yeah. everybody else has a tendency to watch. And those yeah. two people better be hot, or you, or you, or you butt out. That's how Beno was ahead of his time, huh, Cedric? Beno Udry. Beno Udry, man, that's the, the the man, the legend, the myth. <laughs> You ended on the myth, right? Yeah, that's, a- yeah, that's it. The myth. <laughs> the myth. <laughs> I can stop right there. Yeah. Other than his, mo- other than his mother, I'm good right now. <laughs> Max, uh, we we had some controversy here last week. My partner probably didn't want me to ask you about this, but we we're talking about the all time greats, and mm-hmm. he told me his top five. He used to have Wilt in his top five. Now he has Wilt six, and he moved Larry Bird into his top five. What say you? Ooh. I'm putting you on the spot, big fella. Wilt or Larry Bird? Well, do you want? Well, I'm I'm, I'm taking Wilt. Bam. And the reason I take Wilt, the reason I take Wilt, he was one of the most dominant forces ever to play the game. Mm-hmm. The man, the man, averaged over fifty points 
you know, some people get 50, average 50 in one Ooh. year. Yeah. He had, he, he had one year. This is one of the stats that blows my mind. One year, the man averaged over 48 yep. minutes a game. <laughs> he played in every single minute of every game, and that including overtime. Yeah. He never mm. fouled out of an NBA game. Mm. He still has records today when it comes to scoring that still are legendary. So I'm not, not kicking at Larry. I think Larry is obviously one of the greatest players to play the game. But what Will Chamberlain is on my, my Mount Rushmore when I start thinking about players and what he was able to do. The big fella always said, and then the 25,000 women he slept with, Ooh, that's a whole nother That's story. a different record right there. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a different Hall of Fame, huh? <laughs> you know what's interesting, guys? Go ahead, Max, real quick. I, I just saw this this morning or yesterday, uh, uh, and somebody told the story of when, you know, the game's 50 greatest players got together, and Jordan and Wilt were arguing about who the best player was of all time, and Wilt ended the conversation by saying, Michael, they changed the rules to help you, they changed the rules to hurt me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why Will, like, they changed the rules of the game to try to slow down Will. They changed the rules of the game that helped Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm. That is, uh, that, you know what? I would start using that from now on because that is cold blood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, and it really is true because what they did, they widened the lane, and Will Chamberlain used to, he was a bad free throw shooter. He used to run from the free throw line and dunk his free throw. And now they made you stand behind the line. Oh, and shoot wow. the free throw. So he had all these things that they said, no, we can't, we, we got to change all these. <laughs> yeah. Things. Well, because you know, you would dominate the game so much, but that line alone is a killer for anybody yep. who thinks that Michael Jordan would be, yeah. or anybody would be greater than Will. Cause the only one I think I said, two people changed the way the game is played. Will Chamberlain and the other guy, Steph Curry, right mm. down the street from me. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Seth, as long as we're, as you say, we're keeping it real, uh, and you mentioned Steph Curry, do the Celtics feel deep down that they should have already had one? Should they? Do they feel that they should have taken nothing away from the Warriors, but they feel like in 22 they had the Warriors and, and should have won that series? Don't they have 17 or is 18 championships? 17 now. Oh, no. Not yet, not yet, big fella. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, in that particular time, and I said this and even said to Draymond Green, uh, Jeremiah Green changed that series uh -huh. with his physicality against Jalen Brown. Mm. He literally, and I, 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 it's, I was stunned. He kicked Jalen Brown in the head. Yeah. Then he gets up and he follows Jalen Brown into a huddle. <laughs> I said during the eighties, he might have walked in. But damn it, he wasn't walking out. <laughs> and then he got mad with me saying, "Well, you said that I would, you know, punch people will punch me." No, no, they wouldn't punch you. They they would have knocked you, you know, out. I mean, you just got to talk another word. Uh, but yeah, I think he, I, I yeah, I think he changed the tenor of that series. Celtics were up two one, and uh, Golden State had an opportunity to win one, and and uh, they kind of let it slip away. And Golden State, with their experience mm. and their savvy, uh, were able to take the game away from Tatum and Brown winning their first championship. Max, uh, my partner here asked me earlier to show. Uh, with winning banner number 18, what would that mean for Boston, the organization? And I told him everything. That's, that's just been, you know, to have one more than the Lakers, that would mean everything. Put it in perspective. What would banner 18 mean for that organization? As I said before, you can ask, you can, as we win number 18, uh, ask, tell James Worthy, smell the smoke coming from my ass as I passed him by, okay? That's what I would say. <laughs> I would start, I would start I there. But, yeah, I think that, you know, to get past the fakers and, you know, not to – and for them to, to have another banner over them, that would be – it would be absolutely great. Me and James Worthy and Michael Cooper go back and forth laughing and teasing each other, but I laughed when I said, man, but they just hung that – they hung that mid-season banner up and the uh, mid season, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I said that looks different up there. I really look different in front of my man Michael Thompson. But uh, yeah, it would just, it, it 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 clarifies the greatest or the greatest professional uh, basketball team when you start about the Lakers, uh, the Fakers, excuse me, the Fakers and the Celtics. And <laughs> if the Celtics were able to get another foot up on them, I think if Brown and Tatum win one this year, they can bust through. 
they could win several more over the mm. next couple of years. And I don't think that's going to happen in L.A. right now. Mm. Hey, what about these comparisons? I know they're silly, but, oh, Michael Jordan, Anthony Edwards, I know that's kind of silly, but what do you make of the way Anthony Edwards is coming into his own this postseason? Well, he's, he's no doubt he's a tremendous player, uh, but you're, he's not ready to step into that role yet. I mm-hmm. think that, you know, it took a while, and people always talk about Michael Jordan when he won his first. Michael Jordan got swept early in his career, mm-hmm. you know, in the playoffs. Uh, but this kid right now, he's going to be special. I mean, he, he's he's creative. He shoots the ball. He defends. Uh, you know, a lot of people saying he's a leader, but I think we've already, you know, crowned him before we mm-hmm. should crown him. And it's so unfair to him. It's so unfair to Michael Jordan to even compare him to Michael Jordan. The greatness of Michael is, is no, nah, that just that that should be that's sacrilegious. Yeah. Yeah. Max, uh, you know, uh, obviously yesterday we mourned the loss uh, of the great Bill Walton. Uh, I know you were traded uh, for Bill Walton, headed back. Uh, Thank you very much, brother Draper. Thank you. For that. I, I, I don't know that's a sore spot. Take you know, your time. No, no, to I, I, keep, I keep hearing that from everybody. That's what they keep telling me. Like, oh my God, how do you feel? Uh, one of the Celtic owners came up to me and said, "Yeah, yeah Max, I've got you know your loss. I feel so bad for your loss of Bill Walton. I know he was your teammate." And and you know, brother Draper, this one time I didn't say a word. I just shut up. I want to say, dude. You know, I got traded for this guy, <laughs> so I never played with Bill. Right. I only saw him from afar, yeah. and then they tried to say the 1986 team that Bill Walton played on after I got traded was the greatest yeah. team yeah. ever to be around, but the greatest team to ever be around, they only won one championship. Mm, that's true. How many did you I win in Boston? Say. I, I think I got two, and uh, yeah. you know, I was a I was a Finals MVP. <laughs> and there's only been I would like this as I told Draymond. There's only been 35 people in the history of the NBA who've been the Finals MVP, and damn it, I was one of them. Damn, I got a really dumb question on that. I know they redid the trophy last year, so not so. It's mm-hmm. uh right, the Bill Russell Trophy. Yeah, did you get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you have a Bill Russell Trophy? Did they or give you a new one? Or yeah. Yeah. yeah, what do you got? Really, brother Draper knows that's a sore issue with me because when <laughs> I was the finals, finals MVP every year before and then every year after I became the finals MVP they always gave that guy a car oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the year that I won it in 1981 they gave me a watch and it was a cheap ass <laughs> Seiko watch so, oh was it a Rolex <laughs> no brother it was Seiko something it was one of the, it was one of them, them those watches that you you can get off the street in San Francisco or in a back alleyway. So <laughs> and you had to wind it up on the side, Max. You had to wind that yeah. thing up with the <laughs> they, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's the only thing I could have on LeBron right now. I can walk up to him and say, Michael, yeah, you guys got one of these? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what the hell is I show Jason Tatum, I show Brown the watch and they just bust out laughing. So <laughs> that's always I always say that's a funny thing for me, but you know, one thing they can't take away. They can't take away the Finals MVP. Right. That is right. true, man. Right. Every time we introduce you, 1981 mm-hmm. Finals MVP. Locked down Robert Reed back then, right? That, that's who you guys yeah. uh, beat, right? You locked him down. Yeah, we about locked. But you got the, the real guy was uh, Moses. Moses, Moses yeah. Really oh, that he got you was, back a couple years the, later. Yeah, you know that. He got you the, back in Philly. Yeah, that was the engine right there. And I know you would bring that up, Brother Draper, since you're a Philly person. <laughs> you always throwing th- – and you're telling me about your, our friendship. Okay, thank you. <laughs> let me, Max, let me ask you one last question because we've talked about this before, you and I. I view Dr. J, Julius Irving, as one of the most underappreciated superstars from back then. Like, you know, we talk about the all-time greats, and I'm not saying Doc is three or four mm-hmm. or five, but nobody ever mentions Doc. I know you grew up uh, idolizing Doc, looked up to Doc. Just put into context what kind of player he was, ABA versus NBA. Oh, this guy was unreal. I had this thing in the NBA uh, for a while. They had a play called a clear-out play. Mm -hmm. And what would happen, they would give the ball to Dr. J on one side, the other four guys, and then the other four guys had to go over to the other side. Mm -hmm. So it was me and Dr. J isolated on that one side of the floor. And all I remember is standing there 
and all I could see from my peripheral was 18,000 people start getting up on their toes. <laughs> I was like, oh, hell, <laughs> something bad about to happen here in a minute. But he was, that was, that was a real, not only that, I think, and it's really funny though, I think he's getting more of his due lately with some of these commercials they yeah. have with him. Yeah. And the way, the way he's carried himself, and to me, the way he's aged, Dr. J is, that brother, that brother's holding poor brother with gray and with yeah. the with the salt and pepper going on, and he's uh and if you hear him speak and talk about the game, uh, you fall in love with over and over and over again because a lot of times he will do the thing that a lot of other players don't do. He'll connect the old um, street games in New York City and Rutgers Park. Uh, to what is happening today, the Connie Hawkins of the world, mm. the people we've forgotten about. So that's why I think that he's, to me, he's so underappreciated as a player and also of a, uh, for a diplomat for the game. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Best of luck to your Celtics going forward. You should know that uh, Mr. Draper has suggested that if it comes to uh, finals of Boston, Dallas, he will not be uh, pulling for your Celtics. Wow, what a surprise. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Max. I'm a hater. Hey, I, I, I worked there 11, 12 years. Don't try and win a ring now, big fella. Y'all won one in 2008. I came in 2009. We ain't win one. So I'm a hater. I don't I don't want to see you up there celebrating. Come on now. Damn. Damn, that sounds like, sound like a whole bunch of gay. A whole bunch of hater age you yeah. right now, In my cup right here, big fella. I'm, I'm, let, me, I'm, let, me do, let me do it like this. Light the light. <laughs> Max, I'm drinking the haterade with my pinky out, big fella. I got my pinky uh, out see, as I drink it. I, I see you got a pinky ring on to top it off. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Cedric. All right, Max. Uh, all right, gentlemen. All right, now. Oh, I love Cedric Maxwell, man. He's the best. Uh huh. Just the best. Uh huh.